Hello, this is Kerry Shoes from MathWorks. And in this video, I'm going to show how to analyze a circuit using Symbolic Toolbox. The goal will be to derive the transfer function of a circuit. And the particular circuit in this case, our device under test, is a T-coil circuit. Don't worry if you don't know what that circuit uh, is or what it does. I provided some references here at the top if you want more background on the circuit. But even if you don't, the exercise is still relevant for in general purpose for um, analyzing circuits. So here's what the circuit in general looks like, at least from this article's perspective. We've got a mutual inductor, and then we've got some passive components surrounding that mutual inductor. And here's another article in the bridge T coil. Um, here's what our circuit looks like. Okay, we're going to have our mutual inductors there exist here in the middle, and you can see uh, the polarity uh, dot conventions on there. And then we see we've got a couple of capacitors and some resistors surrounding the mutual inductor. Now I've redrawn this circuit uh, one more time to show the, the mutual inductance effect. So there's many ways you can model a mutual inductor here. I've chosen a method where I have the I have the original inductors LA and LB, uh, but I also have the effect of mutual inductance uh, on each of those coils. So in other words, there will be a voltage, an extra voltage induced into coil uh, LB uh, by coil LA, by the current that's changing through uh, coil LA, inductor LA. And likewise, whatever current, uh, changing current is going through inductor LB, that's going to induce a voltage uh, in coil, uh, in, in the other coil, in coil uh, LA. So we're showing that by the addition of two extra voltage sources, one on each coil respectively. And then I've just redrawn the circuit such that the inductors are labeled as their impedance values, the Laplacian S times the inductance value, the capacitor is one over the capacitance value times S. And then you see the particular current uh, I selected for analysis purposes, you could use, you know, any current voltage notations you wanted as long as you're consistent. Here you see I've actually got three unique currents. I've got I1, I2, which is the current through uh, inductor LA. I've got current I3, which is the inductor through current LB. And then I have some um, linear combinations of those sums and additions of those currents through the other components. So. Uh, the, the, the bridge capacitor has I1 minus I2. That's pretty easy just by nodal analysis. And the capacitor CE has I2 minus I3. Again, easy by nodal analysis. And the output voltage, uh, which is V2. Um, and the current that goes through resistor R2, I1 minus I2 plus I3. Okay, so using those currents and voltages, I use symbolic toolbox to write the equations. In this case, I wrote KVL, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, starting at one particular node and then working way, my way through around the circuit. So I started, let's say, let's just take one particular branch here. I started with the voltage source V1 on the left-hand side and said that is equal to the current through R1 times the current. Uh, and then I chose whatever path here. I chose RA. And that would be I2 times RA. And then the voltage drop across this um, uh, voltage source. Uh, and then the voltage drop across the inductor LA. And then continuing on the voltage drop across inductor LB, the, the voltage source here, I3 times RB, finally plus V2 to ground. And so that gives me equation one. Notice when you write equations using symbolic toolbox, you do need to declare the variable in the equation as symbolic by using the sims uh, keyword and then all the symbolic variables you're going to be using. And then you do need to have an equal equal sign to describe the relationship between the voltages on e each side of the equal sign. So it's not a single equal, it's a, a double equal sign there. And so then I've got, in this case, I have, uh, I think I have six of these equations. Uh, you know, for the different paths through the circuit. So I've got another equ equation two goes through the bridge capacitor. So if I go up a little bit here, you can see I've got a starting at V1 through R1 through CB. 
and then back to V2, and that would be equation two. For equation three, I go through the CE to ground. So I start with V1 through R1 through RA through um, you know voltage source through LA through CE to ground. And then finally for equation four, uh, again, I need to get uh, the output resistor into the equation. So I have the equation there, which that relates. Let's see, let me go down here again. I lost my mouse. Uh, I have the equation which relates the current uh, through R2 to the voltage across R2. And then my last equation here, well, the last uh, circuit equation really, is from V2 uh, th back through the circuit through the capacitor CE. So I have those five equations. So my last equation starts at V2, go back through RB in the other direction, through LB, through CE to ground. Finally, the quantity of interest that I'm, I'm after here is the output voltage or the input voltage as the transfer function of interest. So I just create an extra variable for that. TF is equal to V2 over V1, my transfer function. Then finally, I do this, uh, the solution. I solve uh, for the transfer function. I list all the equations uh, that describe the circuit, including the transfer function, followed by all the variables I'm gonna solve for. And so in this case, I've got six equations. I've got six variables I'm gonna solve for. And then at the end of the day, if you take R dot, you know, whatever, I1 dot V1 dot V2 dot TF, you'll get those particular solutions. So if I were just to execute this section of code, which I've already done, but I'll just execute it anyway, evaluate it. And then down here in the MATLAB area, I will say R. And you see here, I've got solutions for I1, I2, V2, V1 here is just, I'm treating it as just unity and then TF is the transfer function. So we got all of it. Now, the only one, again, I'm really interested in here is TF. That's the one I was ultimately after. Now, that is a very, very long expression. So if you look in symbolic form, it even scrolls off the screen. You can't see it. So that's why I have everything running in here in live script mode. So if I want to, I can actually scroll across and see the entire expression. Now, notice it's even long in symbolic terms or in you know, symbolic express. So it uses shorthand notation, describes some intermediate variables to describe the transfer function where those intermediate variables are described underneath uh, the uh, main transfer function. So again, that's a pretty unwieldy expression. So now let's go down and see if we can make this a little easier to work with. And to do that, I'm going to substitute in actual circuit values instead of symbolic names. So instead of R1, I'm going to use 50 ohms instead of R2, 50 ohms instead of RA, 4 ohms, RB, 2 ohms, CB, 15 e to the minus 15th, and so on. The inductance values, uh, the, the coupling factor between for the mutual inductors, 0.4. So if I want the mutual inductance value itself, it's just 0.4 times the square root of the two inductances. And then that's it. Okay, and then I substitute those in. I use the subs command, basically to substitute those values in the transfer function, r.tf. And then I'm keeping three significant digits of the result. And that becomes my new transfer function number. So if I execute just those lines, which I could do here, I'll say execute those lines. If I do that, uh, I can get the value to, of course, print out both plates. I can get, we can do it right here in live script. I don't need to do it like that. I'll say run uh, section. Maybe I'll put another thing here to make it a section. And let's see, let's go down here, whatever. Yeah, we'll just run this section of code here, run this section. When I do that, you see the transfer function appear. This is far easier to work with than what I had before. You see it's a fourth order expression in the numerator and denominator, so four poles and four zeros. Now we can do things to start working on this in many ways, you can start doing further analysis. We've got the transfer function, so in some sense mission accomplished, but what if we wanna look at its Bode plot? So to do that, we can leverage the ability to uh, convert a symbolic transfer function to a control systems toolbox transfer function. In order to do that, I'm going to extract the numerator and denominator ND using the numdin command. 
then I'm going to substitute, and then I'm going to convert those two things from a symbolic object to a polynomial, general math polynomial, or using the sim to poly function as part of symbolic toolbox. So now I've got the numerator and denominator just in normal as numerical vectors. Then I can create a transfer function object out of that. I call that h underscore t coil. From that, well, if I want to minimize it, get the minimum realization, I remove any extra whole zero redundancies. If I want to, or if I, if I need to, in this case, maybe it wasn't necessary. Then I'm now I've got the same thing as I had before where I had transfer function tf underscore num before uh, here. Now I've got the same thing except in symbolic terms. Now you notice it's scaled a little differently, but actually um, it's really the same. It's just a matter of how it's factored. So for instance, 1.63 e minus 44 over 3.27e e minus 44. Um, if we were to divide top and bottom by the largest coefficient of s in the denominator, we're going to get something like we see here in the control system toolbox format. You're about 0.5 here for the numerator uh, s4 coefficient. At that point, we can take advantage of commands from control system toolbox like poll to get the polls if we want to look at those. Uh, but probably more than likely, we want to get the Bode plot. So I take advantage of the Bode plot to plot it out over some freq over some bandwidth. In this case, I looked at it over 500 gigahertz. So we can see the magnitude response to this T-coil, V2 over V1, um, over that frequency range. We can also look at the phase response over that same frequency range. We can also look again at the step response over some time range, in this case from zero to about 40 minus 11 seconds. You see here for the step response, the unit step response, we have about, you know, a attenuation factor of about 6 dB at steady state. Of course, we can also see that from our magnitude response where we got about 6 dB of um, loss in general, except for at the, at the anti-resonance or at the notch of the T-coil, which is at around 50 uh, gigahertz. Now, what makes uh, the symbolic toolbox nice, we want to just, you know, reformulate this problem and derive another transfer function. We don't have to go off to pen and paper or whatever and do a lot of work again. Only thing I did here was I had the same exact equations above, except I changed the transfer function to be the output voltage over the input current. So like a trans impedance function. Okay, so, or we could make it V1 over I1 if we wanted the input uh, impedance. You know, we could look at this many different ways. And we do that, we go through the same steps, identical substitute in the circuit values, uh, and we'll plot out the magnitude response of uh, V2 over I1. We'll plot out the phase response of V2 over I1, and finally the step response of V2 over I1. So very, very easy to do. We could derive all sorts of transfer functions really quickly if we only will um, look at our circuit, write the dynamic equations, and then let the tool do the rest. I mean, the hard part here is writing these equations here. You have to think a little bit to do that. Uh, and then afterwards, you just solve for the variables of interest. And then if you want the actual, pr probably more useful form, we substitute in the numerical uh, values uh, for the uh, circuit component designators and get a more useful looking transfer function that we can now do control systems analysis on. Okay, that's all I had. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for tuning in.